Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark and today I'm working on a Waltham size 16 pocket watch that I actually don't know too much about. As you can see already the hands are missing and I'm pretty sure I'm going to find more surprises inside. But take a look at this case back. This is what drew me to the watch in the first place. It's an eagle and an American flag. I mean gosh I just love old things like this and that just takes me back to the days of old. Talk about feeling nostalgic. Oh well, let's get into this thing. I mean, who knows what we're gonna find in here. Like I said, I really don't know too much about this watch. And I got it for pretty much a song. The dial looks pretty good. I don't see any hairline cracks or anything like that, but this is what I want to look at. This is what I want to see. Let's take a look what we've got back here. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. Oh, look at that. 21 jewels. Now that's a nice surprise. I mean, I didn't pay too much. So I'm actually kind of surprised by that. You know, I've been told that the number of jewels can really determine if a watch is worth putting any time and money in to fixing or restoring. I've heard like 15 to 17 jewels is really the minimum number you should look for that will bring back any kind of return on your efforts. Not necessarily in money, but just in the quality of the end result. So we shall see. So the 21 jewels, that's, that's a nice surprise. Anyway, let's keep looking at what we've got here. I'm really going to take my time and let you see everything as I take this down. I'm just looking for things that look obviously broken or out of place right now. I'm really new to this, so I really need to look at everything. I'll just call out things as I notice them. So one of the really first things that I want to look at is the balance and its staff. Blow a little air on this, and uh, as you can see, this uh, one is not moving when I pump it with some air. So more than likely, the staff is broken. It's not really a big surprise because, like I said, I didn't pay too much for this watch, and there was really not much information about its condition. Now, I do have a few other Waltham movements from which I can salvage some spare parts. So I'm not too concerned about finding replacement parts at this point, but I just hope that I have the skill required to either fix the part or just replace it. When it comes to fixing broken balance staffs, the, this is something that I have no experience with and only limited knowledge on how exactly to do it. I also have limited tools at this point so if the staff on this one is indeed broken, I will be replacing it instead of repairing it. Okay, so continuing on, we're going to go ahead and take off the dial. And as you can tell, this dial is in uh, really good shape, even though it's giving me a little trouble getting it off. But now that it's off, just a little dirty. Ugh. Underneath, it looks like there's some spots of corrosion on this side of the main plate. I hope it's not too bad, or, and I hope it hasn't affected some of the other uh, more delicate parts. Uh, the hour wheel also seems to be stuck onto the cannon pinion. Hmm. 
I'm not going to mess with that right now. I'm more interested to get the balance assembly off. But I'll be back for that hour wheel momentarily. You know, the more I think about it, I'm, I'm wondering if the uh, sticking hour wheel has something to do with the missing hands. That could be. Okay, well, now that I've got the balance cock off, I see that the pallet fork bridge doesn't have a jewel, but a metal bearing surface, which I know isn't right because this is supposed to be a 21 joule movement. Now, look at this. The uh, pallet fork is stuck and will not slip from one side to the other. That is just all kinds of messed up. Well, let's get the uh, pallet fork bridge off. Maybe I didn't get that out all the way. That's one thing I'm kind of learning is sometimes when I think I've got the screw out, I actually don't have the screw out and I need to go back and, and loosen it again. Ugh. Ugh. Well... <clears throat> This just keeps getting worse. The pallet fork is stuck in the jewel hole and won't budge. I mean, these are really, really delicate, so I don't want to pry on it too much. I can honestly say I've never seen one stuck in here like this. Maybe if I try to push the pivot out from the uh, from the other side, from the bottom of the jewel. Well, I just can't get this out. I mean, I don't want to damage it trying to get it out. So I think I'll just leave it for now and um, see if it comes out easier after I remove the train of wheels. But before I do that, I need to get the hour wheel and the cannon pinion off or the center wheel isn't going anywhere. So I think I'll just use some of the levers I use to remove hands from the dial with to see if I can get the hour wheel off.
Well, I was able to get the hour wheel off, but look, the cannon pinion is stuck inside it. Sticking parts is the theme for this disassembly, it seems like. I'm not sure if that's a lubrication issue or just a matter of whoever put this watch back together just used whatever parts they could find that halfway fit together. I have a feeling it may be a little bit of both or maybe a lot of both. So now that I've got the hour wheel off and the candy pinion off, I can also remove the minute wheel and then flip the movement over and start removing the train of wheels. I'll begin with the crown wheel. Now, many times the screw that holds this wheel in place is reverse threaded. So I will very gently try turning it clockwise at first. And then if it doesn't seem to move, then I'll slowly apply pressure in the other direction to see if I get any movement that way. And in this case, it turns just like a normal screw. Once that is off, I like to use a piece of pegwood to hold the ratchet wheel so it doesn't move while I remove this screw. It seems like these thin little washers always give me a little bit of trouble. Now, I'm not quite sure why I haven't done it uh, before now, but it would be a good time to put this movement into a movement holder just to make things a little easier to control. Now there are three screws that hold the barrel bridge down and they should all be the same. Now I'll take a look at each one of them before I put them in the tray and then I'll compare them when I do get them in the tray just to make sure that they are the same and in this case they are the same. Now once I get this barrel bridge off, then that will expose the barrel. And here you can see it. Now this contains the mainspring, which is the power for the watch. I will pull on the barrel arbor because sometimes I can get this uh, to come out without, uh, without taking out the train of wheels. <clears throat> oh, and and there the you can see I just pulled the arbor right out. That is kind of weird. I've never seen an arbor that comes out like this before. Okay, well it, it looks like the center wheel and the third wheel are holding the rest of the barrel in place, so I'll just continue on and remove the train bridge. Now again, this is held down with three screws, which should all be the same. But like before, I will verify that as I take them out.
Now it's just a matter of prying up on the bridge and it will eventually come loose. And here we can see the beautiful colors of those jewels. I just love how they look with the light behind them. And with that bridge off, we can see the train of wheels laid out before us. I'll start with the center wheel and move on to the third wheel. And then the fourth wheel. And lastly, the escape wheel. And I'll see if I can get a good look at the pivots on the end of the staff. And that really gives you a good idea of how small those things are. And that is what rides in the holes in the jewels. And with those wheels out of the way, the barrel can be removed. Now, admittedly, I haven't seen a great deal of barrels, but... This one is a new style for me. The lid just comes right off. And the main spring, you now you can see that inside. It actually looks like it comes above the edge of the barrel. And I'm not sure if that's right or not. I'll have to do some research uh, on that. Then I remove the winding stem, the winding pinion, and the sliding clutch. And that little pin slid out. I'm not quite sure what you call that. Some sort of pin, I bet. And now all that's left is the pallet fork. And look at that. Now it just comes right out. And we'll see if we can check the pivots on that. To see if that's uh, maybe the issue with that. And they actually look pretty good. So I want to take a look at the jewels under the microscope to see if I can find out what is up with the sticking pallet fork. Now there's the jewel for the balance wheel. And there are the banking pins that the pallet fork rides between. And there. Oh yeah. Yep, there's the jewel for the pallet fork. And indeed it is broken. I'll see if I can get some backlight going here and if I can get a better look at it. And yeah, you can tell it is completely smashed. No wonder that wouldn't move. I mean, it looks pretty raggedy. Now, I wonder if that broken um, jewel happened when the other watchmaker uh, installed that pallet bridge or exactly when that was um, broken like that. Now we're going to, obviously, we're going to have to remove and replace that jewel. And to do that, I'm going to use this, uh, this tool that I recently got. It's actually a Chinese copy of a Horia tool. And it comes with these little uh, bits that are called pump pushers. And they will help to push out the old jewel. And then there's a, uh, another part called a stump that goes on the bottom. So I'll just place the, uh, the main plate of the pocket watch inside the tool. And this will make sure that the uh, pusher comes down perpendicular to the plate. 
and I can push out that jewel. And as a result, when I pushed it out, we already knew it was broken, but yeah, it is just in pieces now. So I will be ordering a new jewel. So now that the watch has been disassembled, I'll get it ready for a trip through the watch cleaning machine. If you've seen my channel before, you may remember that I restored this LNR Master Machine a few episodes back. This is its first appearance in action since I restored it. If you haven't seen that, you may want to go check it out. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I think it turned out really well. Okay, so while I was setting up this shot, I discovered that there are some pieces missing from this watch, namely parts from the keyless works. There is no way to change the watch from winding to setting mode. If you look at the main plate, you will notice that there are some cutouts making this a lever set movement, but the case is a pendant set case. So this leaves me with a problem. I have a few options and I think I'll put it out there to you viewers to help me make a decision on what to do. I can either A, get a new movement for the case and a lever set case for this movement, or I can B, try to modify this case to accept the lever set movement and find the lever set parts for the movement. Just leave me a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see me do. Until I figure out what we're gonna do with this thing, I think I'll just continue to re the rebuild and try to get it to run as well as I can and see how that works out. Moving onward, I ordered the new pallet fork jewel for the main plate and I also had to replace the jewel in the new pallet fork bridge. If you'll remember, the one that was in the watch when I got it had a metal bearing and not a jewel. And that just wasn't right because this is a 21 jewel movement. So in order to replace those jewels, I used this Chinese Horia tool. And because this video is so long already, I'll show how I replaced those jewels in a separate tool review video for that Horia tool. And that video should be forthcoming in a week or two. And while we're discussing which parts on this watch I'm replacing, I also replaced the balance assembly because the balance staff was indeed broken. Okay, so now we are ready for assembly and lubrication. I'll start with the mainspring and barrel assembly. 
followed by the escape wheel. The fourth wheel. The third wheel. And the center wheel. And I'll put a little Mobius 1300 on the post of the center wheel before I install it. 1300 is a very high quality synthetic oil used to lubricate the gear train, barrel arbor, and steel on steel situations. I usually use three different lubricants and the 1300 is in the middle between a Molly Coat DX which is a grease, and Mobius 9010, which is a very thin oil and is mainly used for lubricating jewels. So I'm continuing by installing the train wheel bridge, which can be pretty tricky sometimes because I've got to line up the pivots of four of the train wheels with holes in the jewels in the bridge. Getting them all to line up can sometimes take a little time and a lot of patience. I use a piece of pegwood to apply some downward pressure while I use my tweezers to manipulate the wheels and try to get them to all line up. The trick is to just keep at it and eventually you'll get it. Then I just continue to hold down the bridge while I install the three bridge screws. Now I'll apply some DX grease to the winding stem, and then I'll put the sliding clutch and the winding pinion on. and then it just slips into place.
Then I'll add a little bit more DX to the outside just for good measure. And with the winding stem assembly in place, I can add the barrel bridge. Now once I think I have it in the right place, I give the barrel a turn with my tweezers and see if the rest of the train of wheels turns also. If it does, as it does here, then I'm pretty sure it's situated in the right place and it can be screwed down. Now here again, I'm holding pressure down on the bridge with a piece of peg wood until I can get the screws in. At this point, I apply some 1300 to the barrel arbor. Then I'll install the click spring and click assembly and screw that down to the barrel bridge. Now I almost forgot to apply some 1300 to the area around where the crown wheel goes, but thankfully I remember. Now I can install the crown wheel and the little part that goes inside of it. I'm not really sure what it's called, but I know it's there to prevent the crown wheel screw from backing out. It's really important that the little hole get lined up with the screw below it so it sits flush and then I can just add the washer and screw it down. Next is the ratchet wheel, 
And if you remember, it fits over the barrel arbor and actually winds the mainspring. The hole in this wheel is actually square, so as to provide a gripping surface while winding. So it takes a few extra seconds to get that all lined up. The click also has to fit in between the teeth of the wheel, so it can do its job of preventing the ratchet wheel from unwinding. Again, I find it easier to use a piece of pegwood to help hold it down while I tighten the screw. Now it's time to try out those brand new jewels for the pallet fork and see if the holes are the right size for the pivots. Actually, I already know they fit. I tried them out before I installed them. But I'm nervous to see how the pallet fork rides in them. I hope it's smooth. This is my first time replacing watch jewels and I must say it really wasn't as difficult as it seemed but I haven't seen it in the watch actually run yet, so I hope I didn't speak too soon. And now there's the pallet fork bridge with a proper jewel instead of that metal bearing. I gotta say, I'm really excited to see if this thing is gonna run again. And we are getting really close now. Okay, so I put a little wind into the mainspring, so there is some tension against the escape wheel and the pallet fork. So the pallet fork should jump back and forth if I did everything just right. It looks like it's doing just fine. I'll try to get an angle where you can see more clearly. I just got to make sure that I keep my hand out of the way. And I think you can tell that I just have to push it a little and it jumps to the other side on its own. And that should indicate that the watch will run when I install the balance wheel. So let's find out. Hey, look at that. I gave it just a little nudge and it started right up. Wow, that, that is so awesome to see it beating. I almost said beating again, but, but I haven't seen it beating the first time. So beating ever. I wonder if you can hear it ticking. This is just so exciting and rewarding to get to watch this thing running again.
I know this has been a pretty long and involved video, but I want to thank you for staying with me and watching to this point. If you like the video, please feel free to watch some of my other videos and even subscribe if you want to. I really appreciate any kind of support you can give me. I'll just oil the jewels and then wait to hear in the comments what you think I should do with this movement. Stay tuned for the Horia tool review video. That should be coming out shortly. And until we meet back here, be safe and may God bless.